Thank you everyone for attending my meeting to plan the next episode of On the Radar, the show where we count down the new, old, and noteworthy board games that captured our attention this month and discuss why they caught our eye. Why are you explaining the premise of the show to us, Paula? We all work here. Well, just in case any of us in this meeting weren't familiar with how of the hundreds of tabletop board and card games released, revitalized, announced, and crowdfunded each month, several inevitably capture our collective attention. These are the top 10 games that recently stood out to us at Watch It Played, and are now on our radar. What an excellent recap of what we've been doing for months, Paula! Okay, now this conversation is properly branded as on the radar. Must we start every meeting like this? Now, if this were an actual episode, we'd probably pause here to mention a sponsor. I'm sorry, you've lost me. Are you saying that if this was an actual episode, we probably wouldn't pause here to mention a sponsor? Sorry, I'll clarify. What I actually said is not the opposite of what you didn't say. But this is sponsored, in part, by Keepers of the Quest Star from Upper Deck. That's the spirit, Chaz. No, seriously, look. Uh, that's right, Chaz. Keepers of the Quest Star from Upper Deck is a brand new, original, one-on-one -on -one dungeon crawler in which players explore a world where they can be both the brave adventurers and the cunning quest master. Delve deep into dangerous dungeons filled with magic and mayhem as players design a quest full of dangerous monsters and clever traps set out to navigate their rival's quest and take their place among the elite adventurers of a legend as they search to discover the unrivaled treasure known as the Quest Star. But stay vigilant, because competing parties of adventurers are also crawling the catacombs to collect the Quest Star for themselves. And when it comes to the Quest Star, the finders are the keepers. Will you become the next keeper of the Quest Star? Launch your dungeon crawling campaign by finding it at your local friendly game store or by following the link in this video's description to Upper Deck's online store. Great. Now that we've established what it would be like if this meeting was sponsored, we can go around and each mention the games that caught our eye this month. Sorry, you've lost me. Are you saying that you don't want each of us to mention the games that have caught our eye this month? Sorry. I'll clarify. For example, I could hypothetically start by mentioning the Lost Cities Roll and Write game from Cosmos. In the Lost Cities Roll and Write, players will embark on six different expeditions, represented by colored paths. Each turn, they'll decide whether to continue with an expedition or start a new one. Acceleration fields and artifacts provide opportunities to advance quickly, but which path to take with each roll will have to be carefully considered. If wise decisions are made, then the player will progress ever onward towards victory. But if an expedition gets stuck, it'll lose points just as quickly as it earned them, leaving them with nothing but a metaphorical duffel bag full of discarded hamburger wrappers. Ah, but what about the game interests you, Paula? Well, I love Lost Cities. I love Rollin' Rights. I love Cats. And I love Jim Varney movies. And while the Lost Cities Rollin' Right only contains two of those four things, I'm still riveted with joy to see how they will combine together. I'm sorry, you've lost me. Are you saying you dislike the game? Oh, no, on the contrary. I enjoyed it even more than Varney's Tour de Force performance in 1988's Ernest Saves Christmas. Wow. Now that's the type of discussion that would take place on an actual On the Radar episode. Because this is an actual On the Radar episode. That's the spirit, Chaz. Why does this meeting include bumpers? So we know where the numbers go. Uh, Chaz, I believe a game that popped back onto your radar this month is Cloud Spire from Chip Theory Games, a one to four player strategy game heavily influenced by both tower defense and multiplayer online battle arena, or MOBA games, telling the story of a war to acquire a powerful and rare energy known only as the source. Oh yeah, here we go. Cloud Spire. Cloud Spire came out in 2019 and it remains the top tower defense tabletop game to me on my list. And the content from its second Kickstarter campaign recently started shipping. There are two new factions introducing new units and new abilities. Plus there were not one, no, but two hardcover scenario books that were printed. And a whole bunch of more stuff in this campaign. I was stoked to open all of these boxes and boxes within boxes to see that all the stuff that was contained within these boxes was stunning quality, just like the original campaign. And speaking of the content from the original campaign, the Kickstarter also included an update pack for all of those previous campaign contents that give you replacement and updated cards, replacement and updated chips, new faction sheets, rules, and scenario books 
that all update the components from the base game. This update pack alone was worth the price of admission to me and absolutely put Cloudspire here back onto my radar this month. I cannot wait to get this game back to the table. And when Oops. Oh, it looks like Chaz got disconnected. I'm sorry, you've lost me. Are you saying that you're still connected to Chaz because I'm not seeing him? Maybe it'll help him reconnect if we just continue on to number eight as if nothing happened. Oh, good idea. Well, Matthew, while we wait for Chaz, why don't you tell us why your first pick this month is Kingdom of Twelve, scheduled to arrive at English retailers later this month from Lucky Duck Games. This is a card game in which each player holds the same hand of seven character cards. Then each round, they choose one of those cards and play it, hidden, to the table. Then the cards are revealed and resolved, unless any cards match, which causes those to be ignored instead. This sets the stage for an interactive game of bluffing, lucky breaks, and tactical double think. Not to mention the chaos, Paula. The chaos that's likely to ensue. You know I'm all about the chaos. I revel in it. Anything can happen in a game, at any time. But fortunately it's just a game, because in real life I am terrified of the thought of something unexpected happening. Uh oh, we lost Matthew too. Well, doing nothing and hoping the issue would resolve itself didn't bring Chaz back. So doesn't that mean the odds are now less that doing nothing wouldn't fix it two times in a row? Brilliant. We'll do nothing. I should do the trick. On to game number seven. Well, Rodney, since you're still here, you can share the first game on your list this month, the new Dark Tidings Archon decks for Keyforge, which introduces a brand new house to the game, The Unfathomable. Replacing Dis in the current card pool, The Unfathomable specialize in controlling their opponents by exhausting enemy creatures. What's more, Dark Tidings also introduces the possibility of evil twin decks, in which many of the deck's cards are exchanged for their evil twin versions, featuring alternative abilities, graphic design, and art. Look, I know everyone on this call knows I'm a fan of Keyforge. There's no point trying to deny it. I got decks and decks and decks of it. But what recently got me excited was the announcement of Keyforge Adventures. These are free print and play scenarios where you'll be given a challenge like facing a giant kraken that you can take on alone or cooperatively with a friend. Now, I really like the competitive play of Keyforge, but a new game mode that's free means new ways to use all these decks I have. What's not to like about that? Rodney? Rodney? Oh no. Now he's gone too. And just like that, I was all alone. The technological tether keeping us together had become an uncrossable chasm keeping us apart. Stranded. Alone. Where could the others have gone? What unseen fate awaits them? What unseen fate awaits me? Come on. Come on, connect, blast you. It's no use. It's dead. And so it was with stinging irony that I realized finally that not all battles are fought in the field. Sometimes our defenders remain under siege, hidden behind the thick abyss of internet disconnectivity like metaphorical walls of a mighty castle, no matter what we do. But even castles offer no true sanctuary, for as castles grew in size and strength throughout the Middle Ages, so did the insatiable engines designed to scale, undermine, and penetrate them. And this fact was never more true than it was with my next pick this month, Warchest Siege, the second expansion for Warchest. An expansion which introduces rules for fortified locations, siege towers, treasure bays, and more. <laughs> War Chest was already one of my favorite two-player games of the past few years, and I thought its first expansion, Nobility, was fantastic. So was it any surprise then that this new expansion, Siege, would also catapult its way onto my personal radar this month? <laughs> no. No, it was inevitable. Relentless. Now if only I could find a way to inform the others. And just like that, I found myself in silent solitude. It's funny how quickly connections can slip away, leaving you with nothing but time. Time and memories. Memories that eventually become stories. Stories that grow in the dark recesses of your mind into legends. Legends like those in the legendary deck building game from Upper Deck, which helped sponsor this video conference. 
Upper Deck recently announced a new collection of limited edition accessories which can be used with any game, including Legendary and the Versus System card game and specialized playmats such as the Dark Phoenix vs. the X-Men and Thanos vs. the Avengers, which are a great way to organize Legendary when you play. But those aren't the only playmats. There's an entire set of rubber-backed mats measuring 24 by 13 and a half inches, which are an eye-catching addition to any game room. All these and more are available at local game stores and through the link in this video's description to the Upper Deck store, where you'll also find Thor on a pink unicorn ready to gallop into battle. Whereas this battle that I'm facing, an existence without an internet connection, would be a challenge. But a challenge that leaves me with something to say. And it's nice to have something to say. That's why I started selling advertising space in my internal monologue. Hello, everyone, people, work colleagues. Huh. Well, the connection is completely gone. All I could do now was take solace in the words that Winston Churchill once said. The Balkans produce more history than they consume. <laughs> so true. And the history of Bosnia and Herzegovina has shown just that. The war that erupted in the spring of 92 brought bitter fighting, indiscriminate shelling of civilians and waves of atrocities. And the historical card-driven war game Brotherhood and Unity doesn't shy away from the grim reality. The game's point-to-point -point movement system, action-driving strategy cards, quick combat resolution and streamlined rules all work together to recreate all of the major events from the Siege of Sarajevo, depicted on a separate, detailed map, to the ferocious battles of the Pasavina Corridor and the desperate defence of the Bosniak enclaves. Initial reviews for this 2-3 player game have been amazing, and the game looks fascinating to me, even though it purportedly works best with 3 participants and I have no friends and the cruel irony was not lost on me. So all I could do now is wonder what fun my phone conferences three other participants were having. I could no longer deny that my life, once a winding labyrinth of possibility, had recently been transformed into a dungeon. Yes, an ever-evolving dungeon, and with the pathways and choices available are different every time I delve into it. It's difficult to survive, and I must rebuild my character from scratch with each attempt I make. A dungeon built on a shuffled deck of horrors, consisting of various foes to combat and other unseen perils. Each card, though, depicts both the obstacle to overcome and the potential rewards for doing so. It was then that I realized I was also describing the next game on my personal radar this month, One Deck Dungeon from Asmati Games. This is a game that haunts my dreams, even though I've only played the digital version, streaming it on my Twitch channel. The Twitch streams will fill the void in my soul that my disconnected video conference has left me. That's right, Paula. Keep telling yourself this. Let it nourish you. And keep delving deeper, endlessly, into that dungeon to find your next Twitch stream. Okay, at this point, I'd just like to ask, what in the world is going on? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do you mean? You left me alone with my thoughts. That's never a good idea. And I'm wandering the woods selling advertisements like some kind of huckster. Wait, wait, wait. You, you don't like the scenes I've written for everyone in this episode? Exactly. Okay, look. Now that Timmy Spangler's gone, I, I just, I just, I wanted to show that, you know, maybe I could fill his vacant position as the head writer by demonstrating my versatility, you know, and taking things in a, in a new different direction. What happened to just talking about the games we were enjoying? Like, remember when Rodney and Matthew streamed that game of Cuba Libre they played? Yeah, that was great. In fact, that game put Cuba Libre onto my official radar this month. I've been continuing to play the game solo over and oh, over. Oh, wait, Rodney. Protocol dictates that we need you to, you know, summarize the premise of the game before we talk about why we like it. Just in case anyone isn't already familiar with it. But all four of us were there. We all participated, each of us- Protocol alone. dictates. Here, I'll demonstrate. Cuba Libre is based on the coin gameplay system and takes one to four players into the Cuban Revolution. Castro's forces must expand from the Sierra Maestra Mountains into Havana. Meanwhile, anti-communist student groups, urban guerrillas, and expatriates try to destabilize the Batista regime from inside and out, while trying not to pave the way for a new dictatorship under Castro. 
idea for Twitch stream. Stream a Cuba Libre reaction video on my Twitch stream. This is a change from the types of games I've been playing for the past few years, and it's totally captured my attention. Cuba Libre is a dense game. You have four unique forces, each with unique objectives and actions they can perform, but I have to say, there's no complexity for complexity's sake. I feel like every rule serves a distinct purpose and is supported by the real life events they're simulating, which makes the rules more intuitive to understand and remember. And it's inspired a personal interest in the history. I'm now watching movies and documentaries on the subject matter when I'm not actively playing the game, which I'm trying to do as often as I can. I have to say, this has been an awesome discovery. So you recommend instead we, we just focus on the games and the gaming experiences that we enjoy? Exactly. For instance, Chaz, didn't you recently play a game of Shadows Over Camelot on Tabletop Simulator with friends of the show, the Incorrigible Party Podcast on their Twitch stream? Idea for Twitch stream. Stream brainstorming ideas for Twitch streams on my Twitch stream. Shadows Over Camelot, first published back in 2005, is a cooperative game for three to seven noble knights of the round table who must collaborate to overcome a number of quests, from defeating the Black Knight to finding the Holy Grail. And quests must be completed before the kingdom succumbs to one of several possible evil influences. However, one of the knights may be a traitor, merely pretending to be loyal to the crown, but secretly hindering their own fellow knights in subtle ways, biding their time until they strike and claim victory for their insidious masters. Ah, thanks for the overview, Matthew. Look, it's just been a while since I had any lines, all right? So yeah, on March 21st, I got to play this little game right here with the Incorrigible Party on their Twitch channel. And even though this game right here is over 15 years old, this was still a hoot and a challenge to play. And I am happy to add that for the first time ever, playing this game, we, the Noble Knights, won the game. First time that has ever happened to me. True, it may have had something to do with the fact that none of us actually turned out to be a traitor. Unless, of course, you, you look into John Detmer's soul. I'm sure you'll find plenty of corruption and villainy there, whether you're playing a social deduction game with him or not. And Chaz, these games don't just have to be special events we put on or something we streamed. We can also just talk about games we recently discovered or have been looking forward to playing. Well, that's right. Take my number one pick this month as an example, Seven Wonders Duel, the two-player game based on Seven Wonders. In the Duel version, players draw cards from a display of face-down and face-up cards in different arrangements. A player can take a card only if it's not covered by any others, so timing becomes very important. That is, in the original game, those cards are used to build amenities, generate coins, and construct wonders. I've been curious about this game for a long time, and recently I finally got a copy and played it for the first time. And I thought I did a great job of implementing Seven Wonders for just two players. It's just nice to have a classic that works so well for a large group now be an option for two that I can also just grab off the shelf. Wow. Thank you guys. Uh, you've opened my eyes and my heart, and you have really shown me the true meaning of board game top 10 lists. That's the spirit, Chaz. God bless us, each and every one. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas indeed. And a Happy New Year. Happy Holidays, everybody. Happy Holidays, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.